Okay, we'll start with, uh, let's start with, so, in the previous classes, we established that, so before that, we should start with that. Whatever we have discussed so far in the previous classes, they were all about the impedance mixture, right? Where we are plotting impedance in the scale of diffusion current. Okay. Uh, rather normalized impedance. What is normalized impedance? Z the real value of impedance by Z C. Right? And what was diffusion condition? It was Z L minus Z0. In terms of normalized impedance, it will be ZL minus 1. ZL. Right? This is okay. Yes, sir. So, if we do some manipulation, algebraic manipulation, gamma ZL plus gamma ZL minus 1. Of Z gamma minus one minus one or small z equal to one plus gamma. Can we write this normalized impedance in terms of diffusion condition? Yes, sir. Okay. Now what is normalized admittance? Normalized admittance is defined as small y here equal to capital Y here by Okay. So, in terms of, so YL is 1 by ZL and Y0 is 1 by ZZ. So, that is Z0 by ZL or 1 by ZL. As expected, the normalized antithesis is the reciprocal of the normalized antithesis. So, this is equal to 1 by YL. So, what is YL? YL will be 1 minus gamma 1. Now this can be written as 1 plus minus gamma 1 minus minus gamma. Can we write it in this way? And we know from complex algebra that e to the power of j pi that is equal to minus 1. So this is written as 1 e to the power of j pi gamma. Can write it this way? Can you write it in this way? Yes, sir. Okay. Now we know that what is gamma? Gamma is a complex number which has a magnitude and an angle theta. So this can be as one plus mod gamma theta plus pi. 1 minus mod 1 theta plus 5. Right? So, what is the conclusion? If we plot any point, this is the this picture, this is gamma i, this is gamma r, if this any point z l, what will be y l? y l will be diametrically opposite. So this will be the constant reflection coefficient or constant base of the circle. And if this is by ZL, YL will be diametrically Is this idea okay? Is this concept okay? Yes, sir. Any point, so what I want to say here is. Suppose this is by ZL. So YL would be we draw a constant VSW circle. Okay, the center will obviously be at all. So this would be right. For example, let us see the most trivial example. If my impedance is 
okay, normalize impedance is 2. What will be normalized impedance? The normalized one side more. Hmm? Sorry, yeah, no point five. Point five, exactly. It has verified that this is my two. This is my two zero on the smoke chart. See, I have made a green point here. Agreed? This is my two zero. Yes, sir. Okay. I draw add this line from one from, from I draw this line from the origin to this two zero. Okay. What will be the point diametrically opposite? This point and this point five and this point. This is true for any two points. If I want any y, if my ZL is anywhere on this picture, I can just the y will be diametrically opposite. Okay. In some switch charts, there is also a marking for additives. That is a bit more complicated, but you can also use the value of additives. Next. Next is we had studied open circuit and short circuit. So this is Z0 and this is short end then at the point Z equal to Z. Then Z D at the point of Z equal to minus N. We have already seen the result that Z at minus n that is equal to Z Z C can be the we have derived this result as well. And it can be shown similarly that if this is an open circuit and by Z0, then Z minus n Z equal to minus n Z equal to zero Z not minus n zero. Minus J Z zero short of now clearly both of them are purely reactive. Both of them are purely reactive. There is no resistive component here. Do you agree? Yes, sir. So and what else are purely reactive? Ideal inductances and ideal capacitors. Inductors and ideal capacitors. Okay. And we can uh, represent any value of inductor or capacitor by a either an open circuit or a short circuit. Let us see that. The re inductive reactance. The inductive reactance of an inductor is given by xl equal to jxl equal to j omega n. Okay. So if we represent this inductor by an by a short circuit and line of impedance z0, okay, j omega n equal to j z0 can be time. Gs get cancelled. Omega n by z0 equal to can of beta then beta n equal to n pi plus n inverse of omega n by z0 you will be or n equal to one by B N by N inverse of So using this formula, we can represent an inductor of any value by a short circuit transmission. Is it okay? Yes, sir. And what about a capacitor? 
वन बाय जी ओमेगा सी इक्वल जी जे सी टेन ऑफ जी टेन तो दिस जी एंड दिस जी विल कैंसल बट देर विल बी माइनस वन विल बी तो माइनस वन ऑफ ओमेगा सी इक्वल टू जे सी टेन जी टेन तो माइनस वन बाय ओमेगा सी जे सी टेन जी टेन सो एन इक्वल टू पाई माइनस टेन इन्वर्स ऑफ ओमेगा सी जे सी प्लस एन और एन इक्वल Plus one five minus ten inverse of one by omega six. This additional pi is there to make this L positive. Otherwise, the L might be a negative L in other directions. Is it okay? Okay, sir. Okay. So any inductor or capacitor can be represented as a Short circuit transmission line, and it can be proved similarly that any inductor or capacitor can be represented as an open circuit by an open circuit transmission line. Okay, you can do a derivation similar. It will be instead of ten inverse, it will be four inverse. Okay, and some final things. Right. So why we need to do this? We need to do this to have induction. Ah. Uh, Which is our next topic? Stub induction. Suppose let me give you a very brief idea. Uh, the problem is that in my computer the stub induction. Wait. my computer this is not open can you try to see whether you can open this experiment or not This one, just try. Ah, uh, what is the value of n? N can be any integer, okay? Zero, one, two, three, four, eight. Because it is simple logic that sine of n pi plus theta is sine theta. N can be any integer. The same thing, okay? Uh, so please check whether you can open this. Uh, if those of you are online on PC or their laptop, they are requested to check whether they are allowed. They are able to open this particular file because I cannot open it, and that has made the experiment very difficult. So next week we will do this experiment. So anybody who is able to open, open should open it from their own laptop or desktop and share this link, and I will help him and you all will help him from his. So, any please try to open this, and anybody who is able to open this is requested to write down. Now, uh, let me give you an introduction about what is in this package. Can anyone suggest a given any random value of load? Fifty. Fifty is already matched. If fifty can be okay, okay. so thirty. Thirty. Thirty will be normalized terms. It will be point six, right? Thirty ohms when it is normalized becomes point six because we always always assume that zero is zero. Okay. So this is by thirty ohms, or in normalized terms, it is point six. And 
we need to match it here. This is our target. This is our goal. We need to reach from this one. So obviously we need to move on the split chart. Right? So what is the most common way of doing? We move along the constant based on your circle in the clockwise direction. Why? Right? Because as you can see here, the clockwise direction is towards the generator. Can you see the written wavelengths towards the generator? Can you see that? Can you see here? See here? Sir, can you please repeat? Yeah. Can you read that is written just above the my green mark that wavelength to a generator? This point, this is our load impedance, okay? 0.6. And we need to match it to 1, which is Z0. Okay? And we will try to accomplish this using single step matching. Right? Now, if you move along the line, this is my transmission line, Z0 is 50, and this has terminated with a 30. Okay. So what happens, how, what, how will ZE change when we 10K or 10K? Uh, actually, you see, uh, Nino, 10k means if it normalizes, it will be 200. Very difficult to show 200 on this match. And in microwave frequencies, we do not generally encounter 10k as such. Ah, there is a problem. If I want to admit him, I have to stop annotating and give him. So this is my ZL and this is my Z0. Okay. So if you move along the line, how will it get reflected in the switcher? If we move along the transmission line, how will it get reflected on the switcher? As a line. Ah, sure about that. I think I'm doing it. If we move along the line, how does what does not change? If we move along the line, what does not change? And what changes? Reactance. Reactance does not change, right? Anything else which does not change? The load impedance will not change, the load impedance is same, and the characteristic will also not change. Okay. So mode of gamma mode of gamma, which is simply Zn minus Z0 by Zn plus zero. Is not changed. Okay. And VSWR was 1 plus 1 comma 1 minus 1 comma. This will also not change. Is it okay? Because they are functions of ZL and Z0 only, and neither ZL, ZL is fixed, and Z0 is also fixed. So this will not change. Do you agree with me or not? Yes, sir. Okay. So, moving a line, it is moving along a line, it is equivalent to moving along the constant based on those values. The VSW doesn't change, so we move on a curve which has the, which in all points are the constant based on the circle. So, moving along a line is equivalent to moving to the constant based on the circle. And if you move towards the generator or away from the load, we are moving in the clockwise direction. And if we are moving towards the load, then we are moving in the opposite direction. This is clearly shown in the picture. 
Can you see here? Wavelength 2 was generated. Okay. This is clockwise and wavelength 2 was known. This is anticlockwise. Can you see it? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Right. So let us draw the known figure. So this is my ZL and this is my Z0, agreed? So if we draw, it's a very, very bad example of a circle, but I will be able to. Something like this is the concept based on a circle. Okay? This is by no means looking like a circle, I'm sorry. Let me draw a circle by you. Okay. Note, now these two points are really important. One is this one, other one is this one. Note that the two points which I have marked using a cross. Can anyone guess what are the speciality of these two points? Why I mark these two particular points? What is the speciality of these two points? The two points both fly on the same uh, resistance circle. Absolutely. And what is the value of the resistance? We have this absolutely correct. One point something. One point something. Not one point something. This one. See this circle carefully. And if you zoom it a little bit more. I cannot actually. It is not zooming in my phone. Oh. This is the one, one, one circle. Resistance of this, normally the resistance of this circle is one. Okay. So this has a reactance of one plus J V1. And this has a reactance of one minus J V2. Is this okay? Yes, sir. Correct. Now look carefully. I have what I have done. I have a transmission line of cathode C to Z C. I have terminated with a resistance to reactants as well. Then. ZL. Okay. And at this point, say D1 and D2, the admittance is 1 plus J V1 and 1 minus J V2. We have found this out. Do you agree? We have found two points on the line where the input admittance is either 1 plus J V1 or 1 minus J V2. That is what we have done on this picture. Do you understand or, you, or I want to explain to you? Please repeat it. Yes, I can. I have. Okay. I have a line whose normalized impedance is 1. I have terminated with a load whose normalized impedance is 7. And I have identified two points on the line say D1 and D2. At this point, Z in, normalized Z in D1 is 1 plus J V1 and at this point, Z in D2, the normalized admittance is 1 minus J V2. So, it should be Y. Why? Why again? 
we are dealing, dealing with aggregate sum of integers. This is one. Is it possible to find this? Is it possible to find these points? Actually, it's better to do it in that two aggregates. This was my aggregates here. So, is it okay? Uh, can we do this by intersection 1 and V2 with the resistance and reactance circuit? Uh, the other point is you do not know the value of V2. As of yet, we do not know the value of V2. Okay, that is why you cannot do it. We only know the one part, but the V1, what is the value of V1 and what is the value of V2, we can get it only from the future. We cannot just do it by this. Okay. So, can we find these two points whose uh, normalized antithesis are 1 plus JV1 and 1 minus JV2? Is it possible to do it? Because they will lie on the one resistance of one circuit. Correct? Now here, if I put a stub in parallel whose input advocacy is minus JV1, then what will be the total input advocacy? If I have two advocacies or two whose in values are Y1 and Y2, what is the equivalent advocate? Why? If I have two advocates in parallel whose values are y1 and y2, what is the equivalent advocate of the circuit? What is the equivalent advocate of the circuit? y1 plus y2 absolutely. There is an the advantage of what with advocate because parallel advocate add up. That is the reason we are dealing with advocate. So here, the input advocacy is 1 plus JV1. If we add a stub whose advocacy is minus JV1, then what will be the equivalent advocacy? One. And we have a match. And we have a match. That is our goal to make the input advocacy one. If the input advocacy is one, input input is also be one. We have master circuit. Do you understand the concept? All we need to do is to find the one point points of this line where the input advocacy is 1 plus JV1 or 1 minus JV2. And there, if we add a parallel stub whose input advocacy is minus JV1 or plus JV2, we get a match. That's the that's our goal. This is how single stub matching works. Do you get the idea? I will explain it in details again. Did you get the basic idea? Any questions you ask me? Yes, sir. Okay. Now see the slideshow. Slideshow I have shared it with you yesterday. Okay, let's check it on WhatsApp. Right. See. This is my Smith. Can you see the slides? This is my transmission line. Okay. The capacity is Z0 and the load is ZR. Right? We need to find one point on the stub, this thing is this stub, where the advocacy is 1 plus JV. There we can add a parallel stub whose length is L stub and whose advocacy is minus J. And we have the match. 
This is the basic idea. So the two parameters, what we need to find out are these. The D stuff and the L stuff. Can you understand this paragraph? If you don't understand, then you understand. Do you understand what is meaning in this paragraph? If you don't, tell me on this. But I am sure you understand what is meaning. Is it okay? No. Hmm. Tell me. Tell me. Obviously, see what is saying. Obviously, if ZR changes, then the load point on the switch chart will change. As a result, both this stuff and this stuff might change. That's what it says. But obviously, see, this is what I was telling you. Actually, since we are dealing with advertences, the parallel stuffs, this beta T is advertence of principal beta. Okay, of impedance. Simply because parallel advertences add up. And parallel impedances, they have a Z1, Z2 by Z1 plus Z2. Okay, that's a bit more complicated. This is the reason we are focusing on impedances and not Because we have the stuff in the There are some series stuff matching where they do it in series, they are obviously impedances. Okay? See, this slide, is it okay? Any doubt regarding this equation? Any doubts regarding this slide? Obviously, these slides are not made by me. This is made by this Ramon Ogawa gentleman. I am thankful to him for that. How does a stub look like? Okay. <laughs> it is a transmission line which is short. And that. You can consider any transmission line is short. But actually, you know, in RF frequency, shorting it is a bit difficult. Because if you just short it by a piece of wire, that wire actually has some inductance. And that inductance becomes very significant in the RF frequency. So the shorting might look very easy when you say that, but shorting in RF frequency is very not so easy. Whatever you try to short, if you short it with a wire, the wire has an inductance, the inductance comes. So it is not regular, it is not really a short. The shorting is not by like what you do in all these things. See, read this slide very carefully. If you don't understand anything, tell me. Unless you tell that I understood this slide properly, I will not tell. Anything you do not understand in this slide, just tell me on this slide. Read this slide very carefully. If you don't understand a single thing, just tell me that I do not understand this slide. Is it readable from your mobile? Was your monitor reading in your mobile? Is it readable?
Can you explain the third equation? Oh, sorry, Ritika, I missed it. Oh, this one. So we have the input impedances, input impedance to be see here. This is my input advocates at the distance d star from the loop. Okay. They in this slide they have not used normalized impedance advocates, they have used the absolute forms. So what it says is that. Here the advocates is 1 plus JB. Okay. So if the star short circuit is the star which are going to add or parallel, if it has the impedance of minus of this value, then we get a match. And the V star will impedance of advocate impedance or advocates always make it uh, in the end. That's what I was telling you. This was by YN, this was by YC. At this point, YN was Y0 plus J. If we add a star whose impedance is minus, advocacy is minus J in parallel, we have the match. That's what it is saying. Okay. Now, do you understand this thing? Do you understand this in the bracket? What is meant by this? Do you understand what is given in the that uh, same place in the same bracket? Very good. Now see here, this is the This is my ZR. This is the impedance which we are going to match. As we expect, YR is diagonally, diametrically opposite to it. We have established that. See these two points. What are these two points? Here the red circle and the blue circle, they intersect. On the circuit mark points, the red circles and the blue circle, they intersect. Okay. Here the advocates are 1 plus JB1 and other one is 1 minus JB2. Is it okay? On the blue circle, the advocates are 1 plus JB something. Okay? But we are interested in only those two points where it meets the red circle. Because as we move along the line, we are moving along the red circle. Is it okay? Now here, if we put two short circuit stubs, or here if we put a short circuit stub whose advocacy is minus JB1, we have a match. Here if we put a short circuit stub whose advocacy is plus JB2, we get a match. Okay. That is what we need to do in single stub. The only thing remaining is to calculate the length of B star and L star. Is it okay so far? Any questions so far? Any questions? And we'll continue with the Any questions so far? Let me take your 